Shalom, my friends, and thanks for joining me today at the tea table. And may the Lord truly set you free as you hear a word from the throne of grace. The other day I was driving with Norma, and the Lord planted a seed in my mind. Out of the clear, a thought came to me accompanied by a vision. I saw a farmer take a seed and drop it in a hole in the ground. It was the same way the Lord dropped this very seed into my mind, which is the basis for today's message. I heard very clearly, paid in full, null, and void. As I thought about this expression that my faithful Heavenly Father gave me, I began to think of the words and how they applied to my life, and it brought back some great memories. I remember many years ago while living in Puerto Rico, Norma and I accompanied a dear brother to an art dealership because he wanted to have something framed. We were on the other side of this very large store looking at a selection of artwork when we came across an artist that we both liked very much. I remember mentioning to Norma that I really liked this particular painting, and she agreed. Mind you, we were completely alone and speaking very low to each other about something we were looking at in an art album. So my brother was done, and we left and went back home. A few weeks later, we get a call from this art dealership, and he tells me the picture has come in and it's ready for pickup. I tell him I didn't order a painting. We go back and forth for about 15 minutes, so I decided to go into the store and settle this once and for all. I get there, and they show me the exact same painting that Norma and I said we liked very much. I told him we didn't order this painting, and we couldn't afford it anyway. To which we are told, it's yours, and it has been paid in full. Twice I reassured him that I didn't buy it. And I even asked my dear brother that we went with, and he said he didn't buy it, nor could he have afforded it. I said to the man, it's paid in full? Yes, he replied. So I said, wrap it up, I'm taking it home. To this very day, we have a wonderful gift that we have no idea who hurt us and who paid for it, but I have a sneaking suspicion the one who gave us this wonderful gift and paid for it has his residency in heaven. Paid in full. What a wonderful sound. You know, every once in a while, Norma and I will go to a restaurant to enjoy a meal. And we ask the Lord, which table would you like us to pay for their meal? And he always points out a table. I call the waiter over and ask him to bring me the bill for that other table. And we pay their bill in full. And we never hang around to see their reaction, but we enjoy thinking about the reaction. When they ask for their bill, and the waiter tells them, your bill has been paid in full. Not only is it great fun for us, and surprise, I'm sure, for the other table, but even the waiter or waitress gets caught up in what we're doing. We had one waiter tell us, this is the coolest thing ever, and he had to tell the other staff members what we did. Paid in full. What a wonderful expression of release. There's another word that can bring joy if used correctly, and that's the word void, which also means canceled or annulled. I remember after my open-heart surgery, we were waiting for a bill from the doctor and the hospital that probably would have been astronomical. We waited and waited, and after some time, came to the realization that whatever the amount was, it had been paid in full, and the bill was null and void. Thank you, Lord. The last word that can bring joy is the word null, which also means insignificant, unimportant, and unacceptable. I remember quite a while ago having a situation that involved the judicial system, and of no fault of my own, I was involved in a case that was pending against me where the other person wanted to throw me under the truck. Serious prayer went up, and after many months, the decision came down from the Supreme Court that the case against me was insignificant, and the actions taken against me were unacceptable, and it was thrown out of the court system. Again, thank you, Lord. Were all three of these examples just coincidences of things going on in my life? Of course not. 
We're told the steps of a man are established by the Lord in Psalm thirty seven twenty three. Sometimes, my friend, God has to direct your steps to where he wants to bless you, just like he directed our steps to an art dealership so he could bless us with a painting that we didn't even know existed. When God directs our footsteps, it also means we have a mission or task to walk out the steps or the plans that are being directed by God for our lives. And God has wonderful plans for us. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and hope, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Many times God will give us a vision of what needs to be done, but may not give us each and every step that needs to be taken. And even there, God is faithful. Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. Proverbs 16.3. Now you might be asking, what does this have to do with paid in full, void, and no? The answer is, we have an adversary that also likes to try and direct our steps and mess up what God is trying to do in our lives. And when we do mess up, this adversary accuses us of being a mess up. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour, Peter 5, 8. And oftentimes we think we are being led in the right direction, but it is really not what God wants for our lives, and we are being deceived. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. Here's where we can rejoice. God always has us covered, and he will never tear us down but lift us up. The enemy not only accuses us before the Father, but he reminds us of how badly we mess up, and probably on a regular basis. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our God, Revelations 12.10. What does it mean to be an accuser? It means someone who is a fault finder and criticizer. So the enemy is finding fault with our actions and is criticizing what we do, how we do it before the Lord God Almighty. And when that doesn't work, he gets us turning on ourselves. So the enemy comes with our guilty ticket, which has to be paid according to the law. But what we get rather than a sentence for the offense, we get a notice telling us, while each one of us had a crushing sin debt, Jesus paid it in full for us through his death on the cross. We're told the Bible says Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. 1 Peter 2, 24 and 3, 18. That means Jesus paid for all of my sins, past, present, and future. Any ticket I get for a sin committed has been paid for in full. And when the enemy goes before the Father, accusing, fault-finding, and criticizing us of a wrongdoing, and handing God a ticket on our behalf, it gets stamped, paid in full, void in null. That is good news. And my friend, that is past tense. Has been past tense. Not will be, or might be, or could be. It has been done. And you know, if the enemy can't get God to condemn us, he tries to get us to condemn ourselves. And oftentimes, we are harder on ourselves than God would ever be on us. It's times like this, when we are beating ourselves up, that we need to remind ourselves that we have a clean record. The penalty for the sin has been paid for by another. And when we do sin, it's not the norm, but the exception to the rule. We're told in Ephesians 2 2, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. The key is once walked, meaning it used to be the norm, 
But now I am a son of the living God and not a son of disobedience. So my sins are exceptions to the rule, not a way of life. And when I do mess up, thank God I can lean on 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How about Psalms 32, 5? I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. And finally, how about 1 John 2, 1? My little children... I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. My friends, Jesus Christ the righteous is the one who stamped our ticket, the reminder of the transgression, the go to jail and do not pass go card with the words, this offense has been paid in full. This ticket is no longer valid. It is void and null. Although important and deserving of a guilty sentence, this person can go free, and their record is clean and clear of the offense. They no longer have to carry the yoke of heaviness. They are free to leave, and that, my friends, is the best news we could ever hear. And with that, I leave you with this. Yevarechecha Adonai veyish madecha. Ye'er Adonai panavi lecha vihunecha. Yisa Adonai panavi lecha veyesem lecha. Shalom. The Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord cause the light of his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn all of his attention to you and give to you the peace of God. God bless my friends and I'll see you again next week at the tea table.